Alonzo roadmap update, a demo of Marlowe, a demo of the ERC-20 converter, and so many exciting things right around the corner. It's time for the weekly recap. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today it's time for the weekly recap, Cardano 360 edition. We watched the entire two hour presentation, so that means you don't have to. There's a bunch of cool stuff right around the corner, so let's do a quick stake pool update and jump right in. As always, we wanna start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to this week's newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support and we're so excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. Obviously the biggest news everybody was excited about this week was the Cardano 360 presentation for May. Let's take a look. We start off here with a nice overview of all the things that they're going to cover in the presentation. We're obviously going to cover all of the highlights, but what we'll do is that for each of these major chapters, we'll put links to all of them in the description below so you can jump straight to their video at the part that you want to see if you want to see more detail than what we cover. So let's take a look. The first thing that they go over is the road to Alonzo. Super exciting. As Charles mentioned in a recent video, the rollout plan for Alonzo is going to be in three main phases over the next 90 days starting with Alonzo Blue. Alonzo Blue is all about a core SPO group, some Plutus partners, and basically less than 50 users or so to get the real basics out of the way. Next, we move to Alonzo White. This is where we start bringing on more pioneers and we have roughly about 500 users. We're trying for some benchmarking here. From there, we go to Alonzo Purple, and this is where we start bringing in lots of people on a public test net. As many users as want to join at this point, and it's all about scalability from there. So after that, we see that there's a couple of other series here of things that are um, parallelized. We see a red and black, but basically the main idea is just these 90 days. And once we get to these last phases at the end, here's just some final touch-ups that happen in parallel and finally leading to our staging and leading us to the Alonzo mainnet and the arrival of true smart contracts on Cardano. Super super exciting. So obviously it's going to depend on how all of the other phases play out, but tentatively let's all keep an eye out for end of August, early September as the projected date for the Alonzo mainnet. So after covering the high level roadmap, then we dig in a little bit more to some of the different stakeholders that are playing their different roles in these different phases. The first one that I take a look at is the Plutus Partners program. We're going to scroll past this part, but if you're interested in looking into more about the Plutus Partners program, check out our link below and it'll take you straight to this section of the video. So continuing on from there, they went to the Plutus Pioneers program. And so for that, we, are, we come to old trusty Lars. And so Lars, let me see if I can find the right spot here, here. So Lars goes into the Plutus Pioneers program and talks about the developers that he's been working with there, and he's calling it a thriving learning community. A really cool update that he puts together in terms of how they're all working together and collaborating and helping each other out. And let's remember here that this is a good thing, not just for them as developers, for all of us as well as part of this broader Cardano ecosystem, because let's not forget what Plutus is. Plutus is the language that these smart contracts will be written on on the Cardano blockchain. So the whole roadmap that we were looking at about how Alonzo gets rolled out enabling smart contracts, none of that matters if nobody knows how to actually write them. So the Plutus Pioneers program is a way for a bunch of like hungry developers that want to get started immediately can learn how to do that and work with each other to build each other up and like level up together to help each other get to that next stage. So Lars has been the one who's been leading that effort and he seems to be very impressed so far with the talent that they've seen. So from there, they kind of go and show a few of the pioneers themselves and they talk about their experience in the program. But this is the next piece I wanted to show you guys explicitly. If you are a developer and you want to learn Haskell and then from there learn Plutus and you want to be part of the Plutus Pioneers program, keep in mind that while this program is in flight right now, there will be a new Plutus Pioneer intake this summer. Of course, we'll let you know in the weekly recaps when those registrations are opening up so you can sign up if you'd like to. But yeah, something to watch out for if you're a developer and you want to be more actively involved. The next piece that was super exciting to see, especially if you're interested in writing smart contracts but you're not a developer, is Marlowe. So for those who aren't familiar with Marlowe, Marlowe is a domain specific language. And what that means is you don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to know how to code. It's put together in such a way where if you're familiar with financial contracts and how to do these things, it's really, really easy to use. The whole notion is to bring everything together to make it easier to read, write, and understand without being a developer, but writing applications that are just as secure and guaranteed. 
So if we skip ahead a little bit, there's actually a really great demo here of what they call Marlowe Run. So Marlowe Run here we can see is a really, really simple way to put together smart contracts. They show some really cool examples. So there's one user on the left. Here's another user on the right. The user on the left is going to initiate a new smart contract for what's called a zero coupon bond. Basically, the user on the left, and we're going to select them here, Shruti, is going to lend Charles one ADA. We're going to write it out here in Lovelaces, so you'll see it out to six digits. But this is going to be corresponding to one ADA. And then the right side, Charles, is going to pay back 1.1 ADA. Again, that's in Lovelaces. So with the terms of the loan set up, the next thing we'll come and do is we'll hit that pay button down on the bottom, and there's the network transaction fee that's gonna be associated with it as well. So when they hit pay, it's gonna open up a new window. We can confirm that payment and hit run. And when that happens, we immediately see the loan appear on both sides. So now on the right-hand side, if they click on it, they can see that, yeah, you're set up for the zero coupon bond, but the investor has not loaned the money yet. So they see that it's pending. On the left-hand side, the person actually lending the money can then go ahead and deposit the one ADA and transact it to the other side. Okay, yeah, I'm going to pay that, pay the fee, send it along. And as soon as they do, we see then that it appears on the right-hand side. The person on the left now sees that they will be receiving at some point their 1.1 ADA, but the person on the right is the one who can actually take action and then pay that back, their one ADA plus the 0.1 that they're paying for the interest. So they go ahead and click on deposit to pay the other person back. They click deposit again for the fee and the total that they're going to be paying back. And that's it. And it's done. So I want to just stop and, and point out here and, and take a look at how easy that whole process was, right? You don't need to know anything about programming. You don't need to know anything about writing code. And you can very easily now lend money to somebody, set the terms in a predefined template contract. And then when that person's going to pay you back, you don't need to go and then look anything back up. It's just right there. They just go and say, okay, yep, now I'm going to pay it back. And they click pay and go through. Obviously, there's going to be lots of templates that we can imagine, right? Instead of doing like one bulk payment, maybe it'll be something where it's multiple payments over a period of time. I mean, really the limits of this are just the limits of, of uh, whatever kinds of financial contracts you can imagine. And there's a lot of them, right? But if you think back to some of the stuff we've been talking about, even with like the Africa special and some of these other things, when we talk about like doing these loans and facilitating them on the Cardano blockchain, I mean, this is it, right? It's not about like programmers knowing how to write lines of code to make this happen. It's about anybody being able to come and quickly lend some money to someone, either a person or a business or whatever, and then get paid back for lending them that money in an easy way that goes over a network. Whereas we saw it's just a fraction of an ADA to initiate the loan. And then similarly, just a fraction of an ADA for the network transaction costs to pay the loan back. Before we continue any further, I want to say if you're as excited as we are and you want to talk about all this exciting stuff coming up in the next 90 days, join us for our next live stream this Wednesday, June 2nd at 6 p.m. Eastern. We hope you can come out, bring any questions you want or any excitement that you want to share. Let's talk through it all together. Okay, back to 360. From there, as always, uh, we go to a Project Catalyst update. Um, we see some numbers here on the progression of Project Catalyst. We'll link below if you want to get some more detail on what's going on. But the short version is Fund 5, they're getting all the proposals and everything underway. Fund 4 has not yet opened up for registration. I know a lot of people are asking about how do you register for Fund 4? And a lot of people are asking, how do I vote in Project Catalyst? Trust us, we know, we hear you. Fund 4 registration has been delayed for probably over a month at this point. As soon as it opens up, we'll let you guys know and we'll make a dedicated video on how to vote in Project Catalyst. And additionally, if you want to stay up to speed with what's going on and you don't want to have to wait for our weekly recap when registration is opening up, sign up for the Telegram group Cardano Catalyst and they have an announcement style channel where they'll be giving you regular updates on Fund 4, Fund 5, and the ones following afterwards. The next really exciting demo that they showed was a live demo of the ERC20 converter. So let me find that. And as the demo opens up, some background for those that aren't familiar. ERC20 on the Ethereum blockchain is the mechanism by which smart contracts were written to make a bunch of different altcoins. We talked about some of them last week, but things like Tether, DAI, Uniswap, all these things are built on top of the ERC20 standard. So the idea with the ERC20 converter is how can we move some of these coins from Ethereum over to Cardano? And as we talked about last week, the reason why both developers and individuals would want to do this is because if you can get the same value and same token on the Cardano blockchain 
as what's on the Ethereum blockchain, but your gas fees and your transaction fees are way lower and the transactions themselves are way faster, then why wouldn't you, right? So the ERC20 converter shows how you can very simply go from the Ethereum blockchain to the Cardano blockchain. We see here in this wallet, there's 150 AGI on the Ethereum blockchain and we can send 50 from Ethereum to Cardano and that's it. <laughs> and it's just like sent over. And then once you confirm it, you now have an equivalent 50 AGI on your Cardano wallet. So let's pause and talk here for a second about what all this means that we've seen so far. We saw how the Alonzo roadmap is coming along and how it's going to enable smart contracts on the mainnet by end of August, early September. We've got Plutus partners and Plutus pioneers learning how to write those smart contracts and get to a place where they can start making useful dApps on the network utilizing smart contracts immediately. We've seen how non-developers can use Marlowe to do the same kinds of smart contracts without having to know any programming at all. And now we see how users that don't wanna be involved in smart contracts at all, but they want to move their altcoins off of the Ethereum blockchain onto the Cardano blockchain to be able to do swaps and things for significantly lower fees and for much faster transaction times, how they can do so with this ERC20 converter pretty easily and seamlessly. I mean, it's, it's really, really exciting how this is all coming together over the next 90 days. To think that a year ago, we didn't even have proof of stake. And now in the next 90 days, we're gonna have smart contracts and be able to bring coins over from the Ethereum blockchain. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. Some initial conversations about Hydra and the idea of how are we going to scale transactions even faster moving forward. We're gonna dig a lot more into Hydra in the future, but just to make you aware that conversations are starting up a little bit more publicly about how Hydra is going to work and how the Cardano system will be able to scale gracefully and handle massive amounts of transactions per second. For those of you that like digging into the details of how rewards are calculated and paid out, there's a nice whiteboard here near the end, digging into the different protocol parameters, K, A naught, and what are some of the tweaks that can be done on the network and tweaks that will be done over the next several months that will affect payouts and rewards. We'll dig into that a lot more as it comes closer to when they're doing the release of some of these changes. And finally, at the very end, they snuck in some really big news that we should all expect a Cardano Gogan Summit in September. They said that they're not sure if it's gonna be in-person, hybrid, or remote only, but look out for dates in September coming up for a Cardano Summit. If there is going to be an in-person version of it, we're gonna try our hardest to be there and we'll let you know how we can all maybe meet up. But regardless, it'll be really exciting to see this annual event put together here in just a few months. If you wanna dig in a little bit deeper into the ERC20 converter and how it's gonna work, check out our recap from last week. If not, check out one of our other videos. If you wanna talk more about all the exciting news coming up, join us on Wednesday for the live stream. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.